Dada is a place in which people speak to each other through joints. It's a visual conversation platform. And the beautiful thing about Dada is that it's people all around the world that they don't know each other and they're like creating these bonds by conversing visually just through images. And we have a community of over 100, um, I don't know, 70, like 100,000, 70, how would you say? 170,000 uh, members. And they have created over 150,000 drawings on their platform. And so it's a very... Uh, it's a very vibrant community. Uh, you create really strong bonds. So uh, it's a community that has been around for the last six years. So we have people, the people that I mentioned on the presentation have been uh, on data since 2014, 2015. And, uh, and so that, that's why now that we have created all this value together, um, what we're doing is, uh, what it's called an exit to community, including all the people who create a value uh, into this exit of, of the company, let's say. Sure, I mean, there is a lot of talk about anarchism, and I think there's a lot of confusion. Uh, I'm definitely not an anarcho-capitalist. It's, it's almost the opposite. Social anarchism uh, is about really uh, looking at people. People, uh, you know, should have the opportunity to develop their talents, to develop their skills, to, to, to do, to fulfill, to, 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 to lead fulfilling lives by doing what they love. But at the same time, that you put all of that into the social account, right? Like all of that you're doing, you're doing it, uh, giving it to the community so that the entire community benefits. And so it's a different way of thinking because it's not, I have problems with uh, the individualism of capitalism, but also with the collectivism of, of something like communism or collectivism. It's like, it's important for us to be recognized as, as individuals, our own singularities. But at the same time, uh, I mean, for me, it's very important, especially being, you know, the kind of person that are always on the edge. Like, if 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 I had to uh, just uh, go by the norm, there will be no visionaries, right? But at the same time. Uh, you know, you want to do it for the entire community. You want to create those synergies. And so I think social anarchism for me uh, really gets that balance. And that is uh, what has informed everything we've done on data. Well, I. I tend to separate the technology from the market, right? Because what we often talk about is really the market. When people talk about NFTs, they're really talking about the market and not the technology. And so the technology is incredible. Uh, here you have a technology in which, for the first time, we have digital scarcity and we can transfer these digital assets to one another and then I give it to you, now you have it, I don't have it. I mean, all of that is revolutionary. The fact that you have a layer of uh, decentralization in which you can create, communities can create their own money, and and that you can uh, design this money uh, in many different ways because it's really uh, you have the tools, so it doesn't have to be money as we know it. I think that's incredible. The fact that you have embedded within the technology the money and also uh, governance is is again it's it's really complex. We only have scratched you know a little part of it, but uh, what we already see is that there is something about blockchains that is inherit, inherit, inherited in, in, inherently. There is something about blockchains that is inherently transactional. And so at the end, uh, I think we were talking about this at some point, it's like, you know, there's no reason why a private key and a public key should be a wallet. Uh, it, the same thing on Holochain is identity. And so uh, you then you start 
understanding, okay, so this is very transactional, something like the invisible economy uh, looks for non-transactional uh, relations and interactions. So it's hard to do something like the invisible economy in a transac in, in such a, uh, a structured infrastructure in which is really about transaction, commodification. Um, and so you can see how it's perfect for the market. And when you go back to Bitcoin and you actually read the paper, all the classical economics and the, uh, the, the typical as assumption in terms of incentives, uh, extrinsic incentives are there on the paper. And so um, I think that is still a lot to do with the technology, that there should be a lot more experimentation, but the market is already co-opting that experimentation because to me, uh, the more the market matures, the less innovation we're going to see because the market tends to fund the projects that, you know, the, the market speculates going to make the most money. So then you narrow, 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 narrow the opportunities, that less experimentation. So to me, uh, it's already kind of late, actually. I think uh, the window of opportunity, uh, it's gone. And maybe other blockchains, but everybody tries to, to be Ethereum. So uh, I have a lot of faith, though, on Holochain because it's a completely different, it's more based on nature, it's much more evolved, it's not just a transactional infrastructure and a ledger. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully uh, something different can be done on Holochain. Sure, I mean, it's a... These things are hard to understand, right? And, and uh, a way that I understood uh, Holochain, they say that, it's, that if you know a lot about blockchain, it's harder for you to understand. But uh, like if you come from out of nothing, it's easier. But I think it's actually helpful to compare the two. Like in blockchain, you have a forced consensus. And so on Holochain, there is not such a thing. There is uh, just different truth. And so it's much more like real life. So you can imagine that if, like, first consensus, I was thinking the other day, it would be like, uh, like if we decide that all the time zones in the world, like we decide that, to, that at this moment is uh, midnight, no matter where you are in the world. We just like forced that truth, regardless of whether it's the morning or the night. Uh, while Holochain actually takes into account uh, all the different truths. It says there is no one truth. Uh, it gets to uh, the, verif the verification of the data integrity differently between agents. And so that's a big difference already, right? For our governance system in which we don't reach consensus, uh, uh, this is like the perfect infrastructure. Another difference is what I was talking about, uh, a private public key, in blockchain is a wallet, uh, in holochain is identity, so my art ends up in somebody else's wallet, while here it's attached to my identity, right? A big difference is that holochain is not a blockchain. Uh, holochain is uh, agent-centric, so everyone has its own chain. And so I will have, it's sort of like you have your own blockchain, but it's a chain, it's a different system. So. I have my chain, you have your chain. Our interactions decide what's, what happens, that's the truth. But what I think is incredible about it, like, okay, let's think about data. You make a drawing on data, you publish it right now. Uh, when you post it, it goes to IPFS, and if we tokenize it, which we don't, but let's say it goes into our smart contracts and we mint it. Um, with uh, Holochain, actually, at the moment that we post the drawing, it's already an NFT. Uh, there are no tokens there, but it's already an NFT, quote unquote, because Holochain is actually a storage also. Like, you cannot storage anything on blockchain, but Holochain is, uh, I think, what will replace something like Amazon. Uh, or you know, iCloud or this kind of services because it is in itself a storage, but that has data integrity. So anything that goes into your chain is already an NFT. Uh, it's very unique, let's say, and so it's amazing because. You can imagine that the act of collecting for us, which we're thinking about no commodification whatsoever, we're not selling, but you can still collect, 
It, it's like the art, my art goes into my chain, and when you collect it, what happens is that it's transferred to your chain, and now you are the custodian of that art. And it's a much more beautiful metaphor than my art going into your wallet. <laughs> So you see what, it's interesting the metaphors we think about when we're designing these systems. Yeah, it's, a, it's very interesting because I've done a lot of events. I don't go to events uh, anymore and I don't do presentations. Definitely don't do uh, such a personal presentations like I did today. But what I loved about when, when they told me uh, about NFT in America, it was like it was really uh, curated. Uh, it was about art. It was a few artists really show, showing their work, talking about the work. And I think that's what made me come here. I, I was in Chile when I got the invitation. I was OK, I will go to that one. I will present a, a story of data and the invisible economy through my perspective as an artist. I've never done that. It's uh, the first time. So it's actually quite special uh, to me. And also there is a lot of old friends here. So that's, it's a, it feels like a safe space and, and really nice. So thank you.